Hi guys, I know this is very informal and not really cool to look at, but somebody asked me about how I chow. And I'm gonna try to make this short, but it, I can't guarantee anything. Well, just a little history. Uh, I've been able to see, hear, taste, smell, feel the other side and the collective around since I was little. So I have that going already. Um, some people don't have that. So I would recommend that you look into uh, courses or videos or books on how to uh, open up or fine tune your psychic abilities. More specifically in this case, your, your inner vision. Vision, hearing, uh, you have to train all of those things uh, prior so that you can do this better. Now, and that's not to say that you can't do this, anybody can do this, but it's helpful to train those things. So these are the, the, key, the key steps on the how-to. All right, so the how-to is you wanna be doing this when you're not gonna fall asleep. So don't be doing this when you just woke up in the morning or when you just woke up. Don't be doing this right before you're about to go to bed for the day. And don't be doing this right around, like if you have a mid-morning nap or a mid-afternoon nap, whatever. Don't do it around that time because you're gonna fall asleep. Uh, if you wanna eat something in advance that's gonna kinda pep you up a little, by all means, you know your body, do what you gotta do. But the key point here is don't fall asleep. And you're gonna understand why in just a second. Um, you wanna be uh, sitting upright so that also you don't fall asleep. So sit comfortably somewhere where there's no distractions for at least an hour, uh, preferably a dark space so that you don't get any, you know, visuals in, behind, in front of your eyelids that are gonna distract you. And we're gonna preferably hope that you have headphones that cover your entire ear. The ones that kind of go in your ear, I mean, they're all right, but the ones that kind of muffle all around your ear, those are usually better. I'm not saying to go out and buy them, just saying that those are my preference. So, sit in a dark space away from distraction for about an hour uh, and in a comfortable position. If you need to, put a pillow under your butt so that you sit more upright. Uh, you also don't want to sit in a place where you're going to fall because there's a likelihood that you might fall asleep. <laughs> I want to make that evidently clear, very clear. Okay, so you're like, say you sit on your bed uh, with your back against the wall, with the headphones on in, a, in, in your room in the dark for at least an hour. You have responsibilities, take care of them first. Ask for a babysitter if you need one. Um, so what are you gonna be listening to? I personally prefer Anything on YouTube that's like channeling music, binaural beats, anything that goes along the lines of what you're trying to channel. So in my case, I usually go for anything that's channeling music that, or like the whatever, whatever hertz music. It's like 432 hertz, you know, or whatever. I go for those because I know for the most part they're gonna be kind of serene, but a little bit uplifting. You don't want anything that's gonna put you to sleep. And I'm going to keep repeating that because it's important. Um, lifting, listening, to up, listening to uplifting music, uh, but also soothing. So Gregorian chant or monks or um, ambient forest sounds, whatever soothes you to like calm anxiety, you know? <clears throat> okay, so once you got that going... Um, what I do, you don't have to do this, what I do is I have already a pen and a notebook with me because I write down what I see, what I hear, what I smell, everything. And this is also my anchor to not fall asleep. You don't have to, but that's what I do. So I'll be sitting upright listening. And what's gonna happen at first is you're gonna have all these thoughts and all these sounds and all these notions and all these feelings coming at you like 100 miles an hour <clears throat> simply because you're in a quiet place especially if you have a busy mind, like I do. Um, ignore them, let them go, let them swim right by you. Don't hold on to them. I'd say after about, on average, maybe 
10 minutes, you're gonna start to feel like those thoughts have, have just passed you by and you're gonna start to experience a little bit more of a quietness and a little bit more of a calm. And you're gonna start to feel like you've moved to a different state. You've moved to a different realm almost. You're gonna start to feel like a little bit lighter if you are paying attention to your body, which, I mean, you should, but you don't have to focus on your body. You're gonna start to feel like a little bit floaty in a way. It's hard to describe. You're gonna feel like if you're about to drift off, but don't. The state that you wanna stay in is the state that you are in right before you fall asleep or maybe like a few moments prior. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's where you start receiving messages. You'll often notice that when people are about to fall asleep, they'll hear voices or they'll see things in their mind or they'll hear, they'll, they'll just hear like random things or they'll get like feelings on their skin. That's where we want to be. <clears throat> it's a very thin line, that state right there. I think it's called theta. T-H-E-T-A. That's where all the messages come in. So... If you're anything like me and you need and you're like have an ADHD brain, it's hard, okay? It's very, very hard to let yourself go and to just receive. You're so adamant on wanting to control the situation that you start having your own thoughts. Well, what you're trying to do is uh, integrate the the, the processes that are going on around you, you wanna connect to the collective. You don't want to, you don't wanna be speaking, you wanna be listening. So, um, it takes a lot of practice. And once that happens, well, you'll start to get messages after time. You might not get them immediately. And if you can just hold yourself in that state, that's accomplishment enough. But once you move past that, you can start to, to get images, sounds, feelings, notions. Sometimes you'll even get feelings of just knowing something. That's all part of it. So see, while I'm doing this, I'm writing it down. And it's very difficult because I have my eyes closed. So I usually have like a drawing pad or a blank uh, notebook. And because I'm in, trapped in an in-between state of wakefulness and about to fall asleep, for the most part, I'll still remember, but I have to have written it down first and I can go back and recollect. If I don't write this stuff down, it'll all slip my mind and important messages will just whew, fly off into the wind. What I used to experience and sometimes still do is when I'm getting to the state to where I'm supposed to be in, I'll see a curtain of smoke, smoke tendrils and I'll go past the smoke. And a lot of people actually report this. They'll see a smoke veil and they'll go past it. Now, I'm not sure if that's astral travel or I'm not sure what that is, but a lot of people report that also during meditation. So if you see that, don't be frightened, okay? And also don't be frightened of all of the intrusive thoughts that might be popping in your head when you're first starting. It's normal, it's just those initial intrusive thoughts, nine times out of 10 are usually just your mind. Your mind trying to grasp the concept of the unknown and you're trying to keep control. You're trying to um, prepare yourself. So when all those invasive thoughts of monsters or worries or anxieties and all that pop in your head, that's just you trying to keep control. You're trying to prepare yourself. But try not to fear what's about to happen you do it every time you go to sleep. Every time you go to sleep, you do this. So it's nothing new. So practice that like once a week until you start to get the knack of it. Now, once you start to get more developed, you'll start to receive uh, information from the collective or the Akashic Records, whatever you want to call it, that proves to be very relevant in, in your waking life. Like for example, I've received names and dates of people uh, who have um, either are still alive or have recently passed. And it's made me aware 
of some of the schemes that people are trying to pull. Like, for example, I received a message of, a, of an uncle and a niece, and she died, and he was guilty of her death. I got that when I was channeling. I even got a name and a date. Well, sure enough, I Google it, and it pops up that this man indeed was guilty of murder for killing his niece for inheritance money. I also got another one that was very specific that was a picture of a white bottle with a blue ship on it, okay? And I didn't know what this meant, but I wrote it down because a lot of times these things are not going to make sense, but they will pop up later. And um, later on during that day, uh, a couple hours later, I go to the this Market Days. <clears throat> if you don't know what Market Days is, it's kind of like a, a local get-together where, where, where local vendors sell their things together like on this one main street um and it's mainly like antiques for us so i'm looking around and then i see this white bottle with a blue ship on it it's a jimmy dean bottle that's from the 60s there's no way in hell i would have known about that bottle and especially not in my town and two hours later bumping into it like what are the odds very 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 slim I had to like Google how old it was because it looked ancient, but apparently it was from the 60s. <laughs> but I bought it. I had to. I had to buy it. I had to have it because I saw it in the in these visions. So I just have it there on my altar and it, and it holds the liquor that I give to my Santa Muerte. Um, but it'll just be little things like that that are relevant to you. Uh, you might get grander messages that are relevant to the masses, but... My experience has been that it's mainly only relevant to me. Um, like, just for... I'm going to give you another example. Like, just the other day, yesterday, I, I tried to channel a spirit specifically. And that is harder. Because that, unless you know their energy, you're looking for a needle in a haystack. Um, unless you already know who and what you're looking for and how they feel... Because that's what you're using. You're using your psychic senses to determine the spirit. Then it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. You don't know who you're talking to. Uh, or, or, or you don't receive anything at all sometimes. But because I've been practicing this for a couple of years now. Or a few years now actually. And, and I know the, the, the energy of the spirit. I'm better able to connect. We're, ever, we're better able to have that magnetism. Um... But if you don't know who you're looking for, it, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to recognize their energy before you do it. To be easier for you. <clears throat> but because I knew this spirit's energy, um, I was able to connect, lock, and receive. <laughs> but that's what you want to strive for. You want to strive for um, channeling to receive messages for a specific situation or for from a specific spirit or even, you know, like the dead. That's the purpose of channeling, you know? Uh, some people will, will this is a, a different type of uh, message, messages, a different type of re receiving, is they'll hold an item and start to channel and receive messages from that item, but I, I cannot do that. Some people can, though. So, yeah, that that's how I do it. And nine times out of ten, the things come to fruition. They're usually TV shows or I see them on a video, you know, or I see them like driving around or somebody mentions it, you know, or something like that. But I make damn sure when I'm writing my stuff down not to say it because I don't want my phone to pick up on it. And I don't want things to pop up as signs on my phone because I don't believe in that. I believe that Google is always watching and listening and anything you say and anything you Google or anything you read, anything you even utter is going to pop up on your phone because Google is always listening. So I don't perceive anything as signs on my phone if I spoke it or if I, or if I pointed my camera towards it. Nope. But um, <clears throat> most, like I said, most of the things that I, that I channel come to fruition, but they're really only relevant to me. So do this for you. Don't do this to make money off of it. Don't do this to, to start, um, you know, uh, uh, some kind of business off of it. 
I mean, hey, do what you want, but I, I wouldn't do that if I'm just starting off. I would have probably been at it for like 10 years before I start doing it for other people, you know, unless you have a natural knack for it, then whatever. But, um, this is mainly for inner progression. This is mainly for, to, to elevate yourself, to, to, for you to evolve personally. It's not for clout. It's not for views. It's not for, uh, money really. It's for you if you want to pursue this. So that's about all I have for now. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention protection. Some people are very fearful of this, you know, and, and I understand why. Because you're opening yourself up to the unknown. If you want to protect yourself, if you want to, like, light a protective candle, if you want to wear a protective amulet, that's fine, you know. Um, but just know that you're doing this every time you fall asleep. It's almost kind of like the precursor to dreaming. So if you don't protect yourself when you're asleep, then yeah. But hey, go for it. If you have protective herbs that you want to burn, or if you have a, a protective, like I said, amulet, or, or even a ritual that you want to do beforehand, that's cool. Go for it. Uh, when you're done, you might want to ground yourself because sometimes those things stay in your subconscious. Um, go eat something. Put your feet on the grass if you have any. Touch a tree. <laughs> um, watch a movie that's distracting. Talk to your friends. Um, try to uh, get the images out of your mind if you don't want them in there. Like through distraction or through uh, reprogramming yourself. Through taking yourself out of that situation. Ground yourself as they say. Um, yeah. Oh, let me warn you. What I've learned... If you're, th if you're looking at a sigil before you do this, huh, get ready for that sigil to stay in your brain. I did it with, uh, I did it with Lucifer the other day, yesterday, <coughs> or was it two days ago? I don't even remember. Um, but now his, his sigil just keeps flashing randomly in front of my face. Like yesterday when I was driving, it was just like psh, psh, right there in my line of vision. And, um, I had only looked at it for a split second, like. Okay, I had looked at it for like 30 seconds, sorry. Uh, but it just kept, but not in my direct vision, in my inner vision. When I was driving, it would just, and I'm like, whoa, hey, dude, calm down. Like, we're done. <laughs> just be prepared for that if that's what you're going to do. I wouldn't advise it if it was your first few times. Don't, don't do that your first few times. Your first few times are for you to feel out the system. So, and if you don't, connect with this informational video then search somewhere else online on how to channel there's a, a billion different ways to do this so that's about it that's about all I have for now and thanks to the person who asked this question <clears throat> um, I want to thank you guys for subscribing thank you guys for um, for being part of the membership I know that I need to update that I apologize and thank you for your patience um, and uh, any comments that are rude or ugly, I'm going to delete and or potentially block because I like for this to be a peaceful place. So thanks for watching.